cats and kittens, and thanks for tuning in to another episode of The Monkey Boy Presents, the DC Comics Superhero Collection by Eagle Moss. And today I'm happy to bring you the 19th and final special edition in this collection, Giganta. And this is an epically sized villainess, as you can see, one of Wonder Woman's main rogues. Uh, Wonder Woman, unfortunately, I feel was underrepresented in the villains category in this uh, collection, but that's neither here nor there for right now. I'll cover that in an upcoming episode. Needless to say, we're going to take a quick look at the packaging of the figure because, of course, it is a special edition. On the uh, right side of the packaging, as you can see, is the superhero collection in bright red along with the DC Comics logo at the top. On the left side of the packaging is the seal of approval and made in lead and all that good stuff. And then on both the front and back side of the box, it has the Giganta name and some artwork of her. You can also see that it is a slip case, you just slip it right off, and inside you have your typical blister box. And just to give you a comparison, here she is, well, her blister box, alongside one of the regular collection figures. So you can see there is quite a bit of size difference in her, being a special edition, she should be, and being a size changer, I think it's appropriate. With that out of the way, we'll of course now talk a little bit about the character. For those of you who are familiar with Giganta, also known as Dr. Doris Zool, well, chances are that's because you've seen her on her very first appearance outside of the comic book world on the Super Friends cartoon show, where she was voiced by actress Ruth Foreman, and she appeared in multiple episodes of that. She was a member of the Legion of Doom, which has carried on throughout most of her career. She also appeared, for those of you who like obscure things, in a couple of live-action one-hour TV specials called Legends of the Superheroes, portrayed by actress Alicia Brevard. Uh, if you look real closely, the Adam is also there, because of course they dated in the comic books at one point in time. She went on to appear in more modern day on episodes of the Justice League animated series, as well as Justice League Unlimited, where she was voiced by actress Jennifer Hale. Uh, and more recently appeared on an episode of Batman the Brave and the Bold. That was a non-speaking cameo appearance on that cartoon show, though. And finally, she has appeared in the LEGO Batman 3 game as an unlockable, playable character. And she's also the largest character that's playable in the game. She has the ability to change her size, which of course is perfect, her being Giganta, and that's her, her thing. Um, with all of that out of the way, We'll, of course, now dive into the magazine first, which will tell us everything we need to know about the size-changing villainous Giganta, also known as Dr. Doris Zool, and then we'll take a look at the figure itself, covering the good, the bad, the ugly. It's the final issue, ladies and gentlemen, the final special edition in this collection, and I think it's a really good one to go out on personally. I hope you sit back, relax, and enjoy the final special edition in the DC Comics Superhero Collection by Eagle Moss, Giganta. First up, the character section. Which is where we discover that Giganta, also known as Dr. Doris Zool, was not always a criminal, but was once a medical research scientist based in Gateway City. She was hailed as a genius and had the uncanny ability to cure almost anyone, except for herself that is. Dr. Zool suffered from a rare blood condition that would eventually lead to her very painful death. Hoping to prolong her life, she found a way to transfer her own consciousness into another body. The body she chose just so happened to be that of Wonder Woman, who at the time had slipped into a coma after a battle. As the process began, Wonder Woman was saved by Queen Hippolyta, her mother, who rescued her in the nick of time. Dr. Zool's faithful lab assistant transferred her consciousness instead into that of their lab gorilla, Giganta. As she fled the hospital and the police in her new gorilla body, Giganta eventually stumbled upon the Balthazar Traveling Circus. Dr. Zul discovered that the circus's strong woman, Olga, had fallen into a mystical sleep that she could never awaken from. 
So the doctor did what anyone would do and she transferred her consciousness into Olga's body, giving us the Giganta that we're all familiar with today. After spending time with Villainy Inc., she went on to be recruited by Lex Luthor to be a part of his new secret society of supervillains. After accepting Luthor's offer, she was given a brand new jumpsuit that would change size along with her, and the sorceress Xerxy gave her the ability to keep her intelligence no matter how big she grew. Giganta went on to attack parts of Washington, D.C. alongside Xerxy to try and lure Wonder Woman into the open after the Amazon princess had gone into a sort of semi-retirement. After being soundly defeated by both Wonder Woman and Donna Troy, Dr. Zool decided to try and reform her ways. She went back to teaching at a major university and began a relationship with a fellow professor there named Ryan Choi, who became the second man to call himself the Atom. her villainous ways, she once again tangled with Wonder Woman on multiple occasions and even stood toe-to-toe -to -toe against members of the Birds of Prey. Finding it difficult to support herself, she started to do odd jobs for Intergang and eventually started to work alongside Bane and his new team of killers called the Secret Six, until most of those villains were transported off the planet by Amanda Waller to the prison world called Salvation. After returning home to Earth, Giganta continued her life of crime and faced some more obscure DC heroes like the teenage Tremor and the robotic team known as the Metal Men. She also found time to take revenge on the man who had killed her one-time boyfriend, Ryan Choi, the second Adam, beating him to near death. look at a couple of Giganta's classic stories. First up, we look at Wonder Woman. Who is Wonder Woman? And this story opens with Wonder Woman missing in action. She's been gone for almost a year and has left Donna Troy, her protege, as the new Wonder Woman. At this time, the sorceress Xerxy, who is one of Wonder Woman's oldest foes, recruits three of her other nemeses, including Giganta, to try and lure Wonder Woman back out into the open. They're eventually faced with Diana Prince, who now leads a group called the Department of Metahuman Affairs, and she, along with them and Donna Troy, take down Giganta and Xerxy and the other bad girls in this comic. It's not a bad comic, but it's not especially great either. Next, we look at the all-new Adam, My Life in Miniature. This story opens with Dr. Doris Zool trying to amend her evil ways by becoming a teacher at Ivy University. She also begins a romantic relationship with fellow Professor Ryan Choi, who happens to be the all-new Adam. Over the course of the story, Giganta is overtaken by an evil god who uses her for occultist purposes, and the all-new Adam has to try and help save her from this evil influence. Finally, we look at Secret Six, Reptile Brain. This story features Giganta when she was part of Bane's Black Ops mercenary band called the Secret Six. They are hired by an amoral government operative to annex a lost world known as Scartaris on behalf of the United States of America. Over the course of the story, allegiances shift and the villains find themselves becoming the heroes by protecting innocents. This storyline also features Giganta taking revenge for the death of Ryan Choi by beating Dwarfstar to near death. 
The first page of Gigantus Friends and Foes section features the villainous Dwarf Star and her teammates on both the Secret Six and Villainy Incorporated. And the next couple of pages feature the heroic Wonder Woman and Donna Troy, the evil Xerxes, and Gigantus' one-time boyfriend, Ryan Choi. And finally, the original thinking section features some of the other gigantic heroes and villains who are standing tall in the DCU. We first get a glimpse at the heroic Elastigirl, one of the founding members and current leader of the Doom Patrol. Hailing from the 31st century, Colossal Boy is a member of the Legion of Superheroes. The evil Chemo, a failed science experiment made of toxic chemical wastes that were poured into a humanoid-shaped vat. Brimstone, who was created on the planet Apocalypse by agents of Darkseid. Adam Smasher, godson of the Golden Age hero Adam and one-time member of the JSA. The malevolent Overmaster, who was a gestalt alien being and the Promethean Giants, who were an extraterrestrial race that developed a mad craving for knowledge. A monstrous being known as the General, who was responsible for the creation of the hero called Captain Adam. The near invulnerable and gigantic Validus, a member of the 31st century team called the Fatal Five. And finally, the Millennial Giants, godlike beings who tried to destroy the Earth by unleashing a number of natural disasters. And here we have Giganta, AKA Dr. Doris Zool, a really nice figure in the collection, the 19th and final special edition figure in the DC Comics Superhero Collection by Eagle Moss. She's solid lead, she's nicely sculpted, nicely painted, really cool details overall. I like the costume too, the fact that they went with the more classic uh, golden silver age costume for Giganta with the two piece bikini sort of thing, the mini skirt and the, the halter top bikini top sort of thing. The leopard print is very nice, although I do like the modern day look with the jumpsuit. This is really cool, very acceptable to me. Uh, it's a great figure to add to the collection, one of only two Wonder Woman villains in this series. Cheetah, of course, was the first. I wish there had been more Wonder Woman villains, but you can see she is nice, very, very nice overall. All kinds of great little details. Uh, the good overall for me outweighs the bad. A nice way to round out the special editions for this series as it unfortunately comes to a close. Uh, and I hope you uh, check out the next section here where I detail what I really like and the few minor things I don't like about her in just a moment. Giganta stands atop the classic DC logo and the underside of the base features her name and serial number. And to give a sense of size and scale, here she is beside arch-nemesis Wonder Woman. Along with all of the other size and shape changers in the Eagle Moss collection. And finally, in a group shot with all of the other members of the Legion of Doom that have been released as part of the Eagle Moss collection. Giganta, aka Dr. Doris Zool, is a fine final special edition in this Eagle Moss collection of DC Comics heroes and villains. I, I there, there are other villains and heroes I would have liked included, but for her to be the final one, I think she's well represented. I think she represents what a special edition should be with the size and the scale and the sculpting overall being very nice. The good does outweigh the bad. The good. I really like the scale and the size of the figure. She is a big figure, which is perfect. I think the paint overall is very well done. It's intricate, even though it doesn't seem like it would be. I like the design of the figure overall. Lots of nice details, nice textures, good sculpting on this figure, really. Uh, talking about the scale for a second, she's a very large figure. She's Amazonian, for one thing, in her build. And she's a tall, tall figure. I like that. One of the taller special editions. So the fact that they made chose Gigant to be special edition I think was a brilliant move on their part. Uh, also you can see the design of the figure overall is very nice starting at the base of the figure. The feet are bare, every toe has some sculpting, that's what I'm talking about with all the really nice sculpting. I love the flesh tone and also the texturing that they chose to give all the flesh tone on her legs. I like the bracelets around her ankles, or I guess they'd be anklets actually. Those are nicely done, nicely textured, they're sort of a metallic gold with some deep brown uh, highlighting there. Uh, like the loincloth that she wears, or mini skirt, I suppose, and that leopard print is really nice. There are different 
tones of brown. There's lighter browns and deeper browns. It all fades and has really good texturing. It looks like a sort of cloth material. That mustard yellow or leopard yellow, very nice as well. Her upper body and midsection, again, nice definition. Uh, I love that V shape to her figure. She looks like a strong woman, but not too much of a strong woman. Uh, it's a nice balancing act they have going on there. Her arms are both really muscular, like the clenched fists, but every finger has some definition. Again, she has the bracelets just like the anklets, that slightly metallic yellowish gold with the brown highlighting again. The top that she wears has that same pattern as the skirt, nicely done, which of course brings us to the head sculpt. It's great. I love this character's head sculpt. I think Giganta looks perfect. She looks feminine, but strong. Very determined look on her face. The hair color is fantastic. I like how it's flowing around and down her shoulders. Great highlighting and shading in there. And her face is not just painted well, but also sculpted nicely. This is one of the best female figures as well. She also doesn't suffer from thick neck syndrome, which I really do appreciate. Onto the bad, which really are nitpicks overall. Uh, the sculpting on mine, at least, on the legs is kind of disappointing. It, it's not awful, it's just not as well done as the rest of her, I think. Like, her feet are great, the anklets are fine, but then you get to the legs, the bare legs. Compared to her upper body, her arms, how muscular her arms are, how toned and well-defined, her legs just look sort of pasty, and I don't know if that's too much paint application or lack of definition in the sculpt, or just my figure, maybe yours is much nicer, but that is a nitpick, a problem I have with mine. My only other criticism, and it's really just a fanboy nitpick on my part here, I wish that she was sort of wearing the jumpsuit costume that she wears on the cover of this magazine. That's, that being said, I really love the classic look too. I think it's great they decided to go classic. Again, it, it's the right way to do it. It does, though, make me question, yet again, why they chose to make Wonder Girl in her New 52 outfit. But I, I, I would have liked the jumpsuit. This classic outfit, though, is great. Finally, the ugly. The only spot I can think of that you might want to watch out for is that left foot that's lifting up off the base a little bit, but otherwise she is a very solid lead figure, not very fragile at all. Overall, I think Giganta is a fantastic figure. I think she's great. She is near perfect for me. Well worthy of being a special edition figure. The way they incorporated her powers into the design of the figure with her size and scale is a fantastic idea. She is really cool to have staring down Wonder Woman. It's nice to have another villain for Wonder Woman. We only other The only other figure here was uh, Cheetah. And, and while that was a great one, I feel it's more fun to have Giganta with her scale and size. You can see her here with all the other Wonder Women. She really does tower over them. It's also nice to have another shape changer and, and size shifter. I, I like those kinds of characters and she's one of the few females Emails and the only villainess in the series that, that claims that power, so it's cool to have her there. It's also nice, if you're a fan of the Legion of Doom, to have one of their most iconic, most long-running and classic villainesses included, and, and she really does look good, great in the group shot. Quite, quite a big, diverse cast of characters. And finally, a shot I think a lot of you have been waiting for, because this is the final special edition in the series, here is Giganta, along with every other special edition and super special special edition figure that was released as a part of the DC Comics Eagle Moss collection here. I'll just let this run for a second and let you bask in this glow. Giganta is a great figure, well represented here, uh, a fantastic character that I am just happy to include with my collection. I think you should include her in yours. I highly recommend picking her up. And I really hope that you have enjoyed a look at the final special edition in the DC Comics Superhero Collection by Eagle Moss. That's it. There are no more. That's why I gave you those nice big group shots. 
I really hope you like that, because I can't ever do it again. Uh, but we do still have a couple more issues of the regular series yet to come, uh, a hero that we're going to take a look at next, and another member of a few different incarnations of the Justice League. I hope you really dig that. As always, I am your host, the Monkey Boy, a.k.a. Jay to his friends. Thanks for watching.